guys. Hello, Safe Harbor teams. We really do miss you. We miss being in group with you and um, hearing all your pearls of wisdom as you help each other out. We have wonderful teens in our groups and um, you know, we can't wait to see you as soon as this whole pandemic passes over us and we can get together again. In the meantime, this video will have to do. It's gonna be a little bit of a lesson tonight. In fact, the title of it is called Becoming Resilient Part One. And the reason it's part one is because our favorite Jen is gonna be doing part two. Not everybody is naturally resilient. In fact, some of us have to learn some skills and practice them. So today, hopefully, you'll learn some of those skills, you can practice them, and then as you go into adulthood, you can carry them with you and handle whatever comes your way. That's my hope. All right, so I'm gonna start with my story as an example, okay? I grew up without my dad. He wasn't there, no. And then in addition to that, my mom had a job, great job, but it moved her around a lot. And so we moved every two years and every two years I was starting a new school. You know, I smiled, I, I was headstrong into school and whatever extracurricular activities. I did everything I could to just push through my feelings and, and just, you know, not pay any attention to them. And the reality was though, I wasn't really so resilient on the inside. This is kind of more what was going on on the inside, these kinds of thoughts here. You see, I can't handle this. The worst is gonna happen, like whatever that is, I'm gonna screw up, I'm gonna fall down, I'm gonna, you know, hurt somebody's feelings. I won't be okay after this, and no one understands me. When I ignored them, they would come screaming at me sometimes. Um, other times they were just kind of faint in the back of my head, and I really did feel like, all right, I'm okay sometimes. There was a study done in the UK and it showed that, um, well, they followed teens who lost somebody. You know, there was a death in the family or it could have been a best friend, but they followed these teens all the way through to adulthood. And they interviewed them every year on how they felt they were doing. And through their stories, they collected, um, they came up with three themes that were the same for every grief story. So three things that are the same in my story, probably the same in yours. All right, and one of them, grief theme number one, disruptions and continuity. So that means your life changed. What was normal for you? Completely different now, isn't it? Hopefully you're the type of person who um, you're learning to acknowledge your feelings, you're learning to tell your story to someone. Um, I mean, that's what's so great about group. We get to tell our, our, our feelings, our stories, we get to be heard, and we get to hear other stories so we can feel normal. Maybe in acknowledging your feelings, you realize that you do need to talk to other people and get some support. So social support needs, that was the same in every grief story. Whether they had social support or not affected their resiliency levels as an adult. So the other thing that affected how resilient they were as an adult was the amount of honesty they had in their life, whether it was the adults being honest to them about what happened, or it was them being honest with themselves about their feelings. It's been a long time for me working through this, but now I can have more positive thoughts. So I can change my thoughts now um, to be more true and real and accurate to what's really going on instead of my exaggerated negative thoughts that I showed you the first time, right? Okay, so here's two things you can practice to become more resilient no matter what you're going through that is causing you to have these overwhelming thoughts and feelings. Okay, so first thing is you can focus on your thoughts, what's going on in your head. And the second thing is you focus on your body and what's going on here with yourself. But both of these 
you have to stop, you have to pause, you really have to breathe, okay? Whatever it takes for you to calm yourself, take a breath, and then notice what's happening in your body. Is your posture tight? Shoulders tense? Are you having a headache? Upset belly? You know, when I get anxious, when anxiety overtakes me, I tend to feel really tired and weak and a little bit shaky. Whatever's going on for you, take a moment, breathe, feel it, recognize it. What triggered these thoughts and feelings that you're having? What, why are you feeling shaky or why are you feeling tense? What's going on? And um, you really have to talk yourself through it. You can do it out loud with somebody else, which is great too. But you don't have to have somebody else. You can talk this through with yourself. Um, you can write it down in a journal, work it out, keep thinking. And if you can figure it out, then that's when you can start to change the narrative and you say, um, okay, I do know why I'm nervous. I know what's going on. And instead of I can't handle this, I'm going to start telling myself this one. I can handle this with help. See that one? I can handle this with help. Okay, so that would be a new narrative you could tell yourself and then you know, all right, I need to reach out to somebody because I'm not okay right now and I need some help. Okay, so you can tell yourself, you can walk through worst case scenarios that would happen and you can walk through them with yourself and say, all right, realistically in the past, what's the worst that has happened? What's the worst that can really happen? And if that happens, how will I be okay? How will I manage that? Talk through that. Some people prefer that kind of logic and thinking. And that's really this one where, you know, you're saying bad things have happened before. And, you know, I'm still here. I got through it. So how am I going to get through this? Okay. So that's something you can do. That's focusing on your thoughts. The other one, number two, I said was focusing on your body. So um, maybe you've tried, you've wrecked your brain, you've tried to figure out your thoughts, you don't know what triggered them, you have no idea why you're feeling this anxiety right now. So same thing, you know, you do that same pause, breathe, pay attention to your body, where are you feeling it? Um, you know, learn to recognize it and learn to sit with it and allow it. Allow yourself to have that feeling. And in fact, these hard feelings that you have, lean into them. Feel them because they're trying to tell you something. Your body is talking to you. So it's, it's trying to say, hey, something's not right here, and we need to do something about that. You know, if you put your hand down on a, on a hot burner, you get a really bad feeling. The burn sensation is an awful feeling. But why do you have that sensation? To protect you. So you move your hand off of it, and you don't get hurt. Same thing with those inside feelings we're having. They're there to protect us. They're there for us to figure out something ain't right. You know, you could just say, I don't know why I feel so sad. And instead of saying like, uh, no one understands me. I don't know why I feel this way. No one else knows what it's like. You might say, oh, my body's trying to tell me something. It's probably trying to tell me I'm not okay. And I probably need to tell someone else so I can talk about my feelings. And that's this one here, you know, I need to tell someone else. That's a more positive thought. And so just remember it's cyclical. It's your thoughts affect your feelings. Your feelings affect your thoughts. Or it could just be something like, um, I have no one to talk to. My mom was my best friend. She's not here anymore. She's gone. So, you know, there's no one I can talk to. Well, you might realize, okay, my body's telling me that that's not okay. I don't feel okay, so not talking is not helping me, so I need to find an outlet. You know, scream in a pillow, punch a pillow, go for a run, find a friend to talk to, a chat group online, whatever it is for you. You need to find an outlet when your body's telling you you're not okay. So that's where you can learn from that bad feeling. So it's not wrong to have that bad feeling. I can slow down and think accurately before I go back to being me. And actually, as I was working out this video, I came up with that quote. I really like it. So this is the big takeaway. Slow down and think accurately before going back to being me. So I really hope that that was a good takeaway for you. I miss you, as I said. And um, 
you know what? I'm going to ask you to help me. If any of you can tell me what is a song that you listen to that makes you feel like, I can do this, I got this, it pumps you up, or maybe it's a song that just reminds you that you're worthy, that you know, you're worth love and you're a special person. Maybe it's a song that um, encourages you to get through rough times. Um, so tell me, what, what's a song that's good for you so that when we get back to groups, I can bring the song in, we can talk about it. Um, and even if you're not coming back to group, maybe some other teens can learn from that song and get the same kind of encouragement as well, because you are worth it. <laughs> All right, so that's my video. Thank you, teens. And um, yeah, just comment. Let me know your song. All right.